Good morning, church. We're starting with one of my favorite songs as the prelude from the Muppets, the Rainbow Connection in celebration of pride. Amen. Thank you all. We welcome you, each and every one of you, this morning to First United Methodist Church of Miami, as well as St. John's on the Lake United Methodist Church. We're grateful to be together um, this summer. Happy summer. Say happy summer to your neighbor. And so great to begin this pride together here in Miami. We kind of celebrate it twice a year, but it's great to be here today um, as we begin a new sermon series all aboard and so we're excited about that and we'll share a bit more about that during our announcements as we begin our worship today in this beautiful miami beach let us stand together and sing for the beauty of the earth
us pray. God, we give you thanks for this beautiful day, for the gift of sunshine, for the gift of water, for the gift of community, and for the best gift of all, you with us in this moment, in this hour, in our worship. May we direct all that we are to you in this time. Amen. You all may be seated. As we continue in worship, we invite you to join us in our call to worship found on the screen. You all can read the words in bold. Almighty God, creator of all life, breathe your life in us. As your people gather from near and far, breathe your life in us. As we navigate the storms and chaos of this world, breathe your life in us. When we mess up and miss the mark, breathe your life in us. As we seek to love and serve all as you have taught us, breathe your life in us. Amen. And each week here at St. John's, we say together the affirmation of who we are. This is to remind us of who we are as Christians, who we are as children of God, and how we behave in the world and in this space. So let us say these words together. St. John's on the Lake and First United Methodist Church of Miami are reconciling congregations that affirm the sacred worth of all people. All are welcome to fully participate in the life of our church and ministries. Each of us as we grow with God and in our faith, whatever your race, ethnicity, economic situation, gender or sexual orientation, background or God-given abilities, you are welcome here. God calls us to acts of love, grace, and advocacy together here and out in the world. We hope to be a sanctuary and a place without barriers for all of God's creation. Amen. At this time, we invite you to stand to sing our song of praise with us, Reckless Love. Good morning, church. My name is Catherine Magarino, and I'll be singing the song of praise today. Thank you so much for being here with us. I'm happy to be here with you. And to me, this song uh, reminds me of times where I have felt uh, unlovable. You know, I've made mistakes. But God's love always uplifts me and reminds me that I am loved, and he loves me too. Uh, please feel free to sing along and stand as you like. so, so kind to me. 
Catherine for singing with such heart. We welcome you once again to First United Methodist Church of Miami and St. John's on the Lake, United Methodist Church. We're grateful to be together in this season of a missional partnership as First Church awaits our new building downtown, which we said will come this fall. This fall, not an exact date yet, <laughs> but we hope to be in there early fall. But it is good to be together today. As you come into worship, we invite you all to take your bulletin and tear off a certain part. Um, there's a perforated edge here, so you can just fold that over and tear it off. If you could write your information there. And then later on, when the offering comes around, you can put it in the offering basket. This is a great way for us just to know who you are, to keep in touch with you. If you would like any information about events, we invite you to do that as well. This is super important just so we know who's here. And in a few weeks, both St. John's and First Church will have apps where you can actually just do that on an app. And we're all going to save the environment. Isn't that great? Pat yourselves on the back. So very exciting um, about that. We want to just give a big hand for our youth. And for Amber, let's give them a hand because they had a lock-in. They slept here last night. So they're running on how many hours of sleep? Oh, okay. So they didn't go to breakfast club. Oh, okay. So they got a few more hours. But Amber and our youth who are in the back have... Um, been having fun around town and had a great event so we're glad to see you all in worship today and thankful for Amber and her leadership um, many of you know every Sunday morning and then three weekday mornings we do our homeless ministry so precious and others were probably out in the rain this morning no they weren't okay no so we didn't serve anyone this morning, <laughs> but we are here today. And you can talk to Precious if you would like to continue to help serve our homeless ministry. We have a few other announcements as we come into worship together. Um, if you want to look in the back of your bulletin, we have things called small groups. Those meet weekly through Zoom or in person. So read about those, check those out, email someone, get some information. We'd love to connect you. We also have our brunch chapel, our kayak chapel. Some of those are coming up. We also have our yoga chapel. We'll have that officially in the fall. But if you live in the downtown area, the church is now sponsoring on Thursdays yoga in Bayfront Park. Um, so if you'd like to come out, there's an amazing instructor, Nikolai, who leads it. And our first church folks will be there to welcome you and continue to get to know our neighbors downtown as we move back that way. A brunch chapel is next week, and so after church, if you'd like to stay around, we'll all go find a place to eat together. And then our next kayaking chapel is June 25th, and that takes place in the evening right here at the Parsonage next door. As I said before, we're starting a new sermon series um, called All Aboard, Love All, Serve All. 
And so this summer we're working to do a few things and our full calendar will be out next week. Um, but we have a few service events that our church community can participate in together as a church, as well as some fellowship events. So the first one will be a Marlins game, which will be on June 24th. We go every year to a Marlins game. We invite you all to come out. There's a way you can purchase a ticket. We'll pay for part. You pay for part. Come out, and we invite you to invite a friend to that as well. And then we'll have a barbecue back in the back of the parsonage as well as we're having our boat tour again, our sunset cruise as a church, which will ha happen in August. So next week, we'll have all the information for you to sign up, but we're excited this summer to look at all the different stories in scripture that involve water in a boat. There are a lot of them. This is a 10-week series. So we're very excited, excited to be in the spirit of summer here in sunny Miami Beach together. We have a special announcement from Megan, who would like to invite some of you to a concert. Give it up for Megan. Many of you know she's the director of the opera program at New World School of the Arts and began singing with us during COVID. She was traveling around the world as an international opera singer and got halted by COVID, and she began to work with us in our homeless ministry and in our choir. We're so grateful that you're sharing your international gifts with us each week. So thank you so much. So I would like to invite you on June 16th, which is a Friday evening at 7.30 p.m., so I guess two weeks from now, um, we will be having a Music of the Americas recital. So we'll be highlighting or featuring music from North America, Central America, and South America. Um, I'm one of the singers. Gerard is a guest artist. Um, my uh, friend and colleague, uh, Jean Paulo Casarocci, he's a Brazilian pianist. He will be coming as well. Um, and uh, Brian Hazlett, Dr. Brian Hazlett, who's a colleague of mine at New World School of the Arts, he's a cellist and he will be playing. And a few other local Miami artists will be singing, including uh, Maria Briseño and Alex Leon. They will be a part of the concert as well. Um, and we will be singing in English, Spanish, and Portuguese. So I'm very excited. And I invite all of you, um, I believe in your programs or uh, bulletins, you can see a little, great, awesome, thank you. <laughs> awesome, thank you so much, Megan. And lastly, we want to take a moment and recognize someone in our community who will be leaving, and that's Grace. So Grace, come on up. Grace has been um, a member of our communities of faith for the last two years. She's been serving um, as a missionary, a young adult missionary, um, with justice for our neighbors. And so, and that will be, the name will be changing to Immigration um, Legal Justice soon, but we're grateful for her work um, with Justice for Our Neighbors. They do immigration work for free. They've helped many people in our community um, in the past few years. And so we're so grateful for your gifts and Justice for Our Neighbors. She also has been part of our serve group that has lived in our new building, reaching out to new people downtown. Um, and she is going and leaving us to go to Wesley Theological Seminary um, to prepare to be a pastor herself. So we're very excited for that. Um, every time she comes to my small groups on Wednesday nights, I, I make her pray as training to be a pastor. But she has incredible gifts um, of warmth and an incredible personality and a heart for justice. And so we're so grateful that she's been with us the past few years and we want to pray for her and to send her off today. So if you want to extend out a hand, and Pastor Kip um, will pray for grace. Let us pray. Great and holy God, we give you thanks for grace and her many gifts that have been shared with us, for the light that she shines wherever she finds herself. God, we thank you for the last two years that she has shared with us, for the ways that she has enlightened our community, the ways that she has served us, and loved us and shaped us for the better. Oh God, we give you thanks for the many things that she has done. And Lord, we know we are sad to watch her go, but we trust her in your care, knowing that she will continue to do great things for the work of your kingdom. God, would you send her in peace and love and uh, shape her as she continues to study your word and study theology and becoming the leader that you have called her to be. As she goes to Washington, D.C., would you watch over her and keep her, surround her with so much love and support that she would continue to be a prophetic presence in this world and bringing so many people into your kingdom. 
God, would you send her in your light and love, and might we continue to remember her gifts with us, knowing that she will always be a part of First Church in St. John's. We give you thanks for grace and wish her well for all the days to come. Amen. Amen. And we have a small gift from our communities to help you start off in school and after we invite you to stay for a few treats and some coffee and extend your love to Grace as well. At this time, I want to invite up Alyssa Archer, one of our youth, who will be reading our scripture today. And we want to, Alyssa next year will be a senior going to her senior year, um, but we do celebrate Alyssa because just the past few weeks she was able to receive her CNA certification. So she's a certified nursing assistant um, in high school. It's a special program Miami-Dade County has, but it's incredible, and we look forward to see all that God's going to do, and we're so proud of you. It's very hard work to do that as a high schooler, and Alyssa has worked so hard. She's so smart. I'm so proud of you, so we're grateful you're here today after a lock-in reading a scripture, so. Thank you. Genesis 6, verse 14 through 22. Make yourself an ark of cypress wood. Make rooms in the ark and cover it inside and out with pitch. This is how you are to make it. The length of the ark, 300 cubits. Its width, 50 cubits, and its height, 30 cubits. Make a roof for the ark and finish it to a cubic above. And put the door of the ark in its side. Make it with lower, and lower second, and third decks. For my part, I'm going to bring a flood of waters on the earth to destroy from under heaven all flesh in which is the breath of life. Everything that is on the earth shall die, but I will establish my covenant with you, and you shall come into the ark. You, your sons, your wife, and your sons' wives with you. And of every living thing of all flesh, you shall bring two of every kind into the ark to keep them alive with you. They shall be male and female, of the birds according to their kinds, and of the animals according to their kinds, of every creeping thing of the ground according to its kind, to every Two of every kind shall come in to you to keep them alive. Also take with you every kind of food that is eaten and store it up, and it shall serve as food for you and for them. Noah did this. He did all that God commanded him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Amen. At this time, we want to invite up all of our children to come sit here on the carpet. And Miss Amber has a special message for you today. Good morning, everyone. Welcome aboard. We are embarking on a summer adventure on a ship, and I'm going to be your fun director. How many of you have ever been on a cruise before? Yeah, some of you have experience. You know, you know who a. a cruise director makes all the, the fun stuff happen, and we do lots of exciting things, right? So, congratulations. You have made it to our muster station. Everyone knows what a muster station is, right? This is where we do a safety briefing. <laughs> you have to get a life jacket. Let me teach you how to put it on. You insert one arm, you insert another arm, and then you fasten it to your body. not tight. I just couldn't, couldn't get the, the zipper in. Okay? So, you attach it to your body. There's clips and zippers. Okay? But we do this because we have to be prepared. Right? We need to be prepared for whatever might happen. What might happen on a ship. There could be a storm. Someone could jump overboard. Someone, we could hit an iceberg like the Titanic. You know? <laughs> There's, there's lots of crazy things that could happen. So we need to be prepared. And one of the best, easiest, safest ways we can be prepared on a ship is by having our life jacket, right? How many of you can swim? How many of you can swim deep in the ocean with sharks? <laughs> yep, so that's why we wear our life jacket. We're prepared. So 
The same thing is true with our faith. We have to be prepared, right? And in order to be prepared for whatever life throws at us, maybe you're playing a sport and you break an arm. Or maybe you're in school and you get a bad grade on a test, right? All these are bad things that might happen in life. But is it the end of the world? No, because we're prepared, right? God's on our side. We know that even though things don't seem like they're going well, things don't seem like they're going how we planned them, God's got our back, and we're not alone. We're prepared. So what are some things we can do to prepare? Study. Study what? The Bible. <laughs> the Bible? Oh, wow. Yes. Good job. We can study the Bible. What's another thing we can do? Pray. Yeah. Read the Bible. Study the Bible. Read the Bible. Or same thing. Pray. Yeah. These are all great options. Another thing, we can serve. How many of you have ever done a service project with me before? Yeah. You guys all have done some sort of service project before. Even though you might not think you did, we made peanut butter and jellies for the homeless. We served drinks at the foot washing. Oh, yeah. yeah. The cans. Yep. We, did, we do lots of stuff. And all of this is helping us to prepare, right? So that's exciting. Congratulations. This is the first, first part of our journey. Each week we'll have something else, but remember, we need to be prepared, right? Will you guys pray with me? our hands and pray. Dear God, thank you for today. Thank you for all our friends, all our family, and all those we don't yet know. We pray for them and whatever they're going through so that they too can be prepared. Help us show your love and to serve all everywhere we go. In Jesus' name, amen. All righty, we're going to head back to the nursery. I think they're already back there, so we can just head on back and do some fun crafts. Thank you, Amber, for always bringing us some fun and energy into worship. Friends, would you all pray with me? God, we thank you for today, and we thank you for the gift of being together in worship in this place. We thank you for your presence with us, and we ask that your spirit might open our hearts and ears to receive your word, that you might stir within us anew. Lord, speak through the words of my mouth and the meditations in all of our hearts. We ask this in Christ's holy name. Amen. Friends, what do you do when a storm comes? What do you do? Shout it out. Go north? <laughs> oh, go indoors? I thought you said go north. <laughs> Some people do that. What else? Bring in furniture. Find your flashlights candles get gas that's smart i see this is why we need people right stay in your house fill the bathtub, fill the bathtub. lots of things right there's lots of things that we can do when a storm comes many people prepare right many people are already prepared it is hurricane season i have not gotten my hurricane kit ready i'm sorry um but there are some people that are the first people out of town that go north, <laughs> right, when a storm comes. But there's also people that are like, mm, it's not real, it's not going to get that bad, I'm going to stay here, right, nothing's, it's not going to get too bad. And then there are the people around us that are already prepared, and they're also asking, how can I help you get prepared, right? Oh, I have some extra flashlights, I have whatever, I, need, I have extra gas, do you need some for your generator, what can I do to help you? right? We all know those people. We all respond to storms a little differently. I remember when I first came to Miami, Pastor Audrey was with me in my first hurricane, and I was freaking out. I'm like, I got to get out. And Audrey's like, no, Kip, we need to stay, and we need to be present, ready to help whatever is needed. 
But the truth is, we all react a bit differently. I remember when I was in college, my dad, my brother, my best friend and I got caught up in a really bad storm on a lake. Some of you may have heard this story before, but we were, one summer, my parents had just bought a new boat dock. Where I'm from in Alabama, boat docks are floating. They're not stationary, drilled into the ground. And so we had bought a new boat dock, but it was across the lake. So it's almost an hour drive going like a regular boat speed on the lake. And then we are towing a boat dock back. So the trip back is supposed to be like eight to nine hours. This is a double boat slip dock with a big swim platform and a big roof over it. So you get a little picture of what I'm talking about. So we go to get this dock and we're towing it back. And about two to three hours into our trip, what happens? A storm comes. The clouds begin to get dark. The wind begins to pick up and the rain begins to pelt down on us. Now imagine being in the middle of a lake, towing this huge dock with one little boat. <laughs> Our other boat broke down on the way over, so we only had one boat to tow it. And in an instant, I hear my dad yell like I've never heard him before, put your life jackets on. Now where I'm from, we don't usually wear life jackets if you're on a boat, especially if you're on a boat dock, right? And when dad says to put your life jacket on, you know it's serious. And so the three of us do just as we're told. We're like putting our life jackets on. Here you go, dad, here's your life jacket. Doing whatever we're told to do. And thank God that we did, because the next few hours just continued to get worse and worse. Before we knew it, the rain was horizontal, right? The wind had picked up so strong that one side of the boat dock had begun to lift up off of the water. And then all of a sudden, we can't hear each other speak. That's how loud the rain is going on this metal roof. Before we know it, we have no control over the boat. The dock is moving in a direction that we can't control. And my dad continues to give us instructions on what to do, and we're just following his lead. And next thing we know, the Doc has spun around and we are moving backwards. <laughs> Eventually we land on shore into a wooded area. My dad gives us instructions, gives us ropes and says, go and tie it to this tree, go and do this. And then said, follow me, we're going into the woods and finding a place to shelter. Thank God <laughs> for my dad in that situation because we made it safely. But for many hours, we were stuck in the storm. Lightning was striking all around us. Meanwhile, I'm thinking I'm going to die. <laughs> and my dad was determined to make sure we all got out alive. We left the boat dock there, went home for the night, and came back the next day. But what do we do in the midst of a storm? Some of us want to run away. Pretend it's not real. Some of us want to protect ourselves, do everything I can to protect me. I'm going to put my life jacket on. I'm going to do all these things. And yet there's a third option, which I saw in my dad, which is making sure not only he was okay, but more importantly, the people that were with him were okay. I think most of our responses usually center around ourselves, which is very natural. We usually have a fight or flight response. But I've been lucky enough, and I think many of us have probably been fortunate enough to witness when other people not only fight for themselves, but fight for the good of others when storms come. As Pastor Audrey mentioned earlier today, we're starting a new sermon series called All Aboard, Love All, Serve All. 
We're going through all the different boat stories and scripture and learning from them and learning how we can apply them to love and serve the people in our midst. And today we come upon the story of Noah and the ark. It's a familiar story to most, if not all, of us. And yet today, I hope that I can share a perspective that might open your eyes to something new. In the book of Genesis, we read that humanity had gone astray in such a way that God is extremely disappointed. And so God tells Noah, I'm going to send a great flood and you're going to build an ark. God gave Noah some instructions, which we heard in the scripture. There were some really specific instructions for how to build this ark. And God says, Noah, build this ark, but then that's not all you're going to do. Once the ark is there, I also want you to gather your family, your children, your children's children, gather them into this boat, and then don't stop there. I want you to gather two of every living creature upon the earth and bring them in. So Noah did as he was told. God wanted creation to flourish even though it had gone astray, right? God didn't want to just wipe everything away and start over. God wanted to use what was already there. God used Noah and his family and the creatures that were already upon the earth and said, I want you to redeem what is here. And so Noah did just as he's told. God puts trust in him to do this important work. And so the storm comes and the storm goes and eventually the flood subsides. And Noah and his family and everything on that ark disembarks, and they go to inhabit the earth again. And at the end of this story in chapter 9, God says to Noah, God offers a blessing and says, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth. In other words, if I was to paraphrase, Create life, protect life, and live abundantly. Live abundantly. Most times I've heard the story of Noah and the ark, my attention has been drawn to the power of God in the story. The power of God to send a flood, the power of God to redeem creation from the flood, to create something new. But as I've been sitting with the story in the last couple of weeks, something different has come up. And that's the power of Noah. The power of Noah in this story. Yes, God is the one who is guiding Noah. God is the one who is giving Noah instructions on what to do. But it is Noah himself, a very human being, who builds an ark, who gathers people and creatures into an ark. If you know how to gather people in, it's like herding cats sometimes, right? He's literally herding cats into an ark. And Noah does this faithfully. And after the flood, it is such a gift that God blesses him, makes a covenant with him with the rainbow in the clouds, and says, I will make a promise to you to be with you and to never do this again. As I think about the story, I'm reminded of the power of humanity. The power that humans have to affect change in the world. The power that we have to protect and to preserve life. Too often our response is a flight response. When things get rough, we just would rather start over somewhere else, right? Oftentimes we hear people say if 
so-and-so becomes our next president, if so-and-so becomes our next governor, I'm moving to another country, right? We would rather fly away to avoid the problems in our midst. And yet the story of Noah shows us the potential of what can happen when humans stick around to fight not only for themselves, but for the good of all. For the good of all. So my friends, what do we do when storms come our way? Are we going to pretend that they're not real? Are we going to pretend they're not that bad? Are we going to fly away? Or are we going to build an ark where people can take refuge, where people can find love and life abundant? In today's world, so many storms have come our way. And so many storms are still coming our way. From the harmful circumstances we find ourselves in, to harmful politics and legislation, to harmful religion, to harmful relationships, to harmful habits. And yet, in the midst of all that is wrong, in the midst of all the storms that we have created, we still have potential to do something good. We have an opportunity to build arcs where life can be found and life can be protected. Recently, I discovered that one of my clergy friends has been doing the work of ark building for a good amount of time. She and her husband are both clergy folks and serve in local churches and have been for many years. As a couple, they don't have any kids themselves, but a number of years ago, they felt a call on their heart to open their home to people who did not have a home. And over the last 10 plus years, they have opened their home to many adolescent teenagers who have been kicked out of their homes, many of which because they are LGBTQ. And this couple has not done this work publicly. I've known this couple for many years and they've not done it publicly. They don't talk about it. They don't do it to flaunt it because they are doing some hard work. And over the last 10 or so years, they have provided shelter and refuge to almost 30 teenagers. 30 teenagers. Isn't that incredible? And recently, they have now become official foster parents and now have taken in a family of four kids and are likely to take in more. Doesn't that sound like ark building to you? That's building an ark. Protecting life, preserving people. It's incredible to know that humanity has power to do good. We have the power to care for and nurture life around us and life within us. The truth is that, friends, storms will come. We can't avoid that. We live in South Florida. Storms have come already, right? We are not shielded or immune from hardship and pain. And yet, even in our vulnerability, we have an opportunity to cultivate life. We have the power to build places and to build communities where people can find refuge, where people can find belonging, where people can find love. Friends, we have the power to protect life 
in so many ways. In the story of Noah, God empowers Noah to do his part, to help creation not only survive, but to thrive, right? And today, friends, I believe God invites us to do the same. God invites us to do our part into protecting and preserving life, not only so we can survive, but so that humanity and creation might thrive that we can abound and fill the earth. At a time when LGBTQ folks are targeted at every turn, how can we as a church create a safe place and refuge? At a time when racism and bigotry become so rampant in our world, how can we cultivate places of validation and healing for people who have experienced so much harm? At a time when people are left vulnerable in our immigration system, how can we cultivate places of belonging and care for people that need it? at a time when people and humanity are continually in harm's way because of the ever-increasing intensity of natural disasters. How can we do our part to care for and to protect life in all of its forms? Friends, storms will come, and yet we are called by God to sustain life in the storm. When the floods come, God does not abandon us, and nor should we abandon God. God doesn't abandon us, and nor should we abandon one another. Friends, we're called to build an ark. We are called to protect life, to preserve life, to nurture life. So today, my question for you is, what ark is God calling you to build? Let's go and build some arks. Let's pray. Great and holy God, thank you for your protection, for the life that you have breathed within us from the moment of our conception to the moments that we are living right now. Thank you for the people who have brought us here, for the ways your spirit has worked in our midst. And Lord, we pray that your spirit would lead us to do the same, to care for the world that you have placed us within, to make sure that creation might be fruitful, that we can multiply and thrive in the care of your love. Lord, help us to love as you have taught us to love. Amen. Friends, at this time, our ushers will be coming forward to receive our tithes and offerings. We invite you to place your Connect card in those plates as they go around. If you would like to give digitally, there's QR codes in your bulletin or online for you to make a gift as well. Let us take this time to be grateful for all that God has done and all that God will do.
chapter of the book and then maybe steer us clear from some of the pain it took to get us where we are this far Thank you, Jenny and Ori. Friends, let us stand to give God thanks for the many gifts that have been shared as we sing our doxology together. Great God, we give you thanks for the many gifts that have been uplifted and shared this day. We offer them to you and ask that you would take them and multiply them and use them to build your kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. You all may be seated. Amen. Thank you, Kip. We come now to um, a special time in our service that we practice once a month together, and that's the act of Holy Communion, where we come together to remember Jesus and his disciples, and that Jesus gave his life for all people everywhere. And so today, as we come to this table, we remember that this table is for all people. This table isn't my table or the United Methodist table, but it's God's table, and all are welcome to come here. All who repent of their sin and want to live in a right relationship with God and one another. As we come to this table today, we remember Jesus with his disciples at the Last Supper. And there he took the bread, he gave thanks, and he gave it to the disciples. And he said, this is my body, which has been broken for each and every one of you. At the supper, he took the cup, he blessed it, he gave thanks. And he gave it to the disciples, and he said, Drink of this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you gather together, drink this in remembrance of me. And so today we come together to eat and to drink this holy meal, to remember the sacrifice that Christ made for us, and to remember that we too are called to be a part of God's body, God's hands and feet in the world to build the ark that God so wants for all people to enter in. Let us pray. God, I ask that you pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and juice, make them be for us the body of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ. God, we ask that you would bless each and every one of us, that you would help us be your hands and feet to build your church. Amen. This is the body of Christ, which has been broken for each and every one of you. And this is the blood of Christ, which is shed for each and every one of you. As you feel led, come forward. You can come in one line this way to receive the bread and then the juice and exit this way. If you would like to have a pre-prepared cup, if you're still very cautious about sharing different things we have a pre-prepared cup here and amber will have that to serve to each of you come as you are ready to receive this meal of grace and love from our lord when you're not 
not sure who you really are. When all you feel is the shape of your scars, and you have more wounds than you can count, open your eyes, look all around. You aren't alone. This is your home. Come and remember who you are here. Do this to remember who I am. Come and remember you belong here. All belong. more questions than you can count. Open your eyes, look all around. You aren't alone. This is your Let us pray. God, we thank you for this holy mystery in which you have revealed yourself to us today, the mystery of your great love for us and for our world. God, we pray today that each and every one of us might be renewed by your spirit, by this holy meal that we've had. God, may we remember that today is a new day. Amen. Let us stand together as we close our service today, singing the hymn, Let There Be Light.
And thank you, choir, for leading us in worship today. Friends, as we look out at a world full of possible storms, know that we have the power to affect change for good. Even when we feel helpless and afraid, know that we have been given an opportunity to protect God's people, to love God's people right where we are. As we look into this week, many of us will be going to annual conference, and we know that our church is longing for healing and protection, and I pray that together we might build an ark for people to come and find healing and love. As we look at the state of Florida, as we look at our country, we know that this is the case for so many people. As we go out into the world, know that God has given you the power the opportunity to do something good, to build an ark, to preserve and nurture life. Go in the power of God, our creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Amen. Amen. 